Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is Jenna from McGuire. So lately, there have been a lot of new products hitting the market that you can use for ink blending on backgrounds. I've heard a few people say they're overwhelmed by the choices, so I thought I would do a video showing the ones that I think work really well and how they compare. Now, there are many different products out there for creating ink blended backgrounds, but I'm going to focus on ink blending tools and blending brushes today because I find those offer the best results, at least in my experience. However, the tool you use is just as important as the work surface you work on and the cardstock you use. So I want to first talk about those things, then we'll talk about the tools, and then I'll talk about storage options. So I have a lot to share. Remember, this is my opinion. I'm just sharing products that I have found work really well for me, and I'm hoping it's helpful to you too. Keep in mind that these tools are great for creating light or dark inked backgrounds, and also any background inking techniques or stamping techniques that you may like to do. Also, these tools work great with stencils. Okay, I feel it's best to start by talking about the different work surfaces that are good when you're doing ink blending. Believe it or not, the surface you work on makes a big difference. The first work surface option I wanted to share is the Waffle Flower Water Media Mat. Now this is a white, non-slip, waterproof and heat resistant surface. The suction back of the mat actually sticks to your table and won't move around while you're creating. It really was meant for using with water so you can mix colors on it and do watercolor, but I find that is great for ink blending. The reason? As you're using your tools, it kind of holds the paper so you don't end up with fingerprints on your ink surface. So you can see here, I just kind of start off of the paper, which I'll talk about more later, work my way onto the paper, and I don't need to hold it. Also notice that the ink that I leave behind on the mat, I can kind of scoop up with my inking tool and bring to the paper, so I have less waste of the ink. I find that when I'm doing a bunch of ink blending, I like to grab this work surface because it holds that paper still. That's a big deal for me. Now there are many things you can do with this water media mat, and I will link to a video that Waffle Flower did sharing many of its properties. Now the other mat that I like to use when I'm doing ink blending is the Tim Holtz Tonic Glass Media Mat. That's what you see me use in every one of my videos. In fact, I do all of my crafting on it. This is a glass mat, so you can mix paints on it and you can uh, clean it very easily. On the left-hand side is the grid, so you can measure and line things up. And on the right-hand side is this white area where you can mix colors. Now, I'm not gonna go into the watercolor things and all the mixing that you can do on this. I just want to focus on the ink blending. But ink blending on a glass surface is fantastic because again, you can start off your paper, work your way on, and then go back and pick up any of that ink that you had left behind on your work surface. So I like to do all of my ink blending on a slick surface, like the water media mat or this glass media mat. If you don't have either, you could use another type of gloss mat, or you could use a piece of plastic, like a thick acetate, and try using that as your work surface. I did want to mention why I don't like to use paper as my work surface for ink blending. Some people do, but I find that because I like to start off the paper and work on, what happens is that paper work surface absorbs that ink and doesn't really help with blending onto your cardstock. So you can use this as an option, but I feel like it's a little wasteful, so I do prefer a slick surface. Okay, next I think it's important to talk about the paper. The type of cardstock that you use makes a big difference in the ink blending result that you get. I recommend using a heavyweight, high quality cardstock, and I'm going to mention three in this video. Now there are other cardstocks out there that work well for ink blending. These are just three that I've tried and have had good experience with. I'm just going to touch on these briefly, but we'll link to a video up here on the top right that goes into great detail about the differences in cardstocks. Okay, so the first one that I like to use for ink blending is Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound. You could also use 80 pound. The, this cardstock is the one that I use 99% of the time in my videos. The other option is Bristol cardstock. The one that I recommend is bright white. Most Bristols are a little off-white, so I like the white option. 
This is a bit smoother, so it often takes ink blending very well. The third option is Gina K Pure Luxury White in either 80 pound or 120 pound. This is another one that's great for ink blending and a nice bright white. So what I'm going to do is show you ink blending on both of these, but remember, I'm gonna come back and talk more about the inking tools later in this video. So let's first demonstrate the Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. I'm using Distress Ink and Picked Raspberry, but you could use any kind of ink for this. You could use Pigment Ink, Distress Ink, Distress Oxide Ink, or Dye Ink. Notice how I start off of the paper and work my way on, and look at that beautiful blend that you can get. Next up, we have the Bristol cardstock. You'll see that this ink goes on very smooth, and it actually goes on a little bit lighter than it does with the Nina. You can control it in either case. I actually use the Nina more than anything because I use that from all of my die cutting, all of my card bases, everything, and I like to keep it simple. Now here's the third, which is the Gina K, and this also gives very smooth results. So here's a comparison of the three. I'll do a little freeze frame here so you can see the three next to each other. On the left, we have Nina. In the middle, we have Bristol. And on the right, we have Gina K. So you can see all of these card stocks work well for ink blending. If you have trouble with one, just try another. Everybody's a little bit different on how they apply the ink, so it's worth trying different papers. Now on these three, I did use a heavier amount of ink using a Tim Holtz ink blending tool, but I wanted to show you how the different papers work when you do a light amount of ink using a blending brush. So here I'm still doing picked raspberry, but I'm putting a lighter amount of color on with an ink blending brush. And again, I'll talk more about that soon. The first one was the Nina Classic Crest Solar White. This one is the Bristol, and next we'll move on to the Gina K. All of them take the ink nicely and give a nice, smooth, even result. Notice how I pick up all that extra ink that I put on my work surface and I still bring it to the paper, leaving little waste. Okay, here's a comparison between the three. We have the Nina Classic Crest Solar White. Then in the middle, we have Bristol. And on the right, we have Gina K. Again, you can see the beautiful blending that you get with all three. If you have trouble with whatever white cardstock you are using, I recommend trying the Bristol or the Gina K. They're smoother and they seem to be very friendly to ink blending. And before we move on, I just wanted to suggest one more time to watch my video on the different papers. There are several different Nina cardstocks out there and they are all, all extremely different. So you have to be careful when choosing what you use for crafting. And in that video, I describe why and I go into detail about the difference that the cardstocks make. Okay, now that we covered that important information, let's talk about the inking tools. Now for inked backgrounds, there are two types of tools that I like to use. The first is the Tim Holtz ink blending tool, and the other is a blending brush, and there are a few different types that I'll show today. Now these can be used interchangeably, so you could just have one type if you want, but honestly, if you do a lot of ink blending, I think it's good to have both. And keep in mind, you can use these tools with your dye inks or your distress inks, so try it with whatever you may have. Okay, let's first talk about the Tim Holtz Mini Ink Blending Tool. This bad boy has been around for a long time and is an essential tool in a craft room. Now, I use these for my Distress Inks, my Distress Oxide Ink, and my other dye inks. You can see these here are just for my regular dye inks. I have one for each color. This is a high-quality wood-handled tool with Velcro at the base that holds a foam applicator on it. Now you can buy a pack of two tools and that's really all you need because you can switch out the foam applicators for different colors. You can also get replacement foams, a pack with lots of them, and really the foam applicator lasts for quite a while. Now there are other tools that have come out on the market that are similar to this, but I've stuck with this one because of the quality and the original design and I can get great results with them. Okay, so let me show you how you can take the foam off. I like to use a cloth when doing so, so I don't get ink all over my fingers. And you can just pull the foam right off of the Velcro piece and switch it out. If you want, you can put a piece of Velcro on the bottom of your ink pad and store that foam piece there. And whenever you use that color, you can take it off and put it on your inking tool. 
I use my inks a lot with my ink blending tool. So over the years, I've invested in lots of tools and I have one for each color of Distress Ink, Distress Oxide Ink, and then various dye inks. But you really only need a couple of these tools and you can switch out that foam whenever you need to. I reach for my mini ink blending tools when I want to apply a heavy amount of ink to a background. You could use a light hand and apply a light amount of ink, but I find this tool is best for a heavier amount of ink, and I use the blending brushes for a lighter amount. But you definitely could use each for the different needs. Now one of the outstanding advantages of using a mini ink blending tool like this is that you can use it with pretty much any ink you want. You can use it with water-based dye inks, hybrid inks, oxide inks, distress inks, pigment inks, and you can just switch from applicator to applicator when you change ink type. Now when I use this inking tool, I always start on a smooth surface as I mentioned earlier. I start off of the paper and work my way onto the paper. That way the excess ink ends up on your work surface instead of a blob on your cardstock. I like to go on with a light hand and then add more uh, color on by going over the area again. If you want to start in the middle of your cardstock and kind of work your way out from the center, always kind of dab the excess ink off on your work surface first so that you don't add that blob of ink to your cardstock. It really takes just a bit of practice to get the hang of ink blending. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Oftentimes, you're putting something on top of this, so it'll hide any imperfections. However, if you start off of the cardstock on your work surface to dab off the excess ink and keep working with a light hand and build up color, I can promise you'll get great results after a bit of practice. Okay, now the next type of tool that I recommend for inking backgrounds is a blending brush. Now these are newer to the market and they've become all the rage in the past couple years. These blending brushes have an easy to hold handle and then lots of bristles, tons of bristles that are so incredibly soft and great for applying a smooth amount of ink, especially when you want something soft. I have noticed that several of the companies recommend using these with water-based inks, such as regular dye inks or distress inks. If you want to use pigment inks or other types of inks, I would recommend the mini ink blending tool that I showed you earlier. I think the reason they recommend these for water-based inks only is because they're much easier to clean that way. The first craft company to bring these brushes to the craft market is Picket Fence Studios, and they call their brushes life-changing brushes. And check out all the different size brushes available. These all have soft brown bristles that are great for inking. Now I have learned that these are very similar to the makeup brushes that makeup artists have been using. Now I am not a makeup person in the least bit and I, I had never seen any tools like this. I know some people have tried makeup brushes for inking application. And I have heard mixed reviews. I know that when you're using these tools to apply ink to paper over and over, it does take kind of a beating, so you wanna make sure you have high quality. So personally, I have decided to use brushes from craft companies, and there are three reasons. The first is I can be sure that the product is high quality and the company will back the product if something were to happen with it. The second reason is I wouldn't have known about these brushes if these craft companies wouldn't have brought them to our industry. And the third is I like to support craft companies when I can because I want this hobby to be around for quite some time. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to share different br blending brushes from different craft companies. The first being these Picket Fence Studio life-changing brushes. Now you can see there are smaller brushes over to the right. Those are good for getting into tiny areas. Say you have a stenciled area where you wanna do different colors. Those little brushes are good for that. But I honestly reach for the medium and large size brushes the most. Keep in mind that Picket Fence Studios does offer a few different variety packs so you can get whatever size brushes you prefer. Now people ask how many brushes you need. Really, I think it's best to have one for every color of the rainbow, R red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then maybe a brown or gray. 
And what I have done is I tied a little colored string around the handle so I know what color ink to use with that particular brush. So this one is for my pink colors. So any pink inks I use for this. You can wash these brushes with gentle soap and water if you want to, but really if you want to change colors, you can always just rub it off onto a dry cloth or onto a piece of paper, and that gets it pretty much clean enough to switch colors. So in summary, the advantages of the Picket Fence Studio brushes is that they're very high quality, there are many sizes available in different variety packs, and they were the first to the market. Okay, the next type of blending brush I wanted to share with you is the Tailored Expression Blending Brushes. Now, these are very similar in performance to the Picket Fence Studio brushes. In fact, all of these blending brushes are very similar in performance. They all have different advantages, and I really like them all pretty equally. Now with the Tailored Expression, of course, you have all the cute brushes in the cute colors, so they are already color-coded for you. And the bristles are white, so you can easily see the color on the bristles. These brushes are only sold in a pack of 10, and all of the brushes are the same size. They also have this little caddy available that you can store your brushes in, and it spins around nicely. I'll talk about that later. Again, the bristles are very soft, perfect for inking application, and they're white so you can easily see the color. Now when using these tools, you'd be surprised. There's a little flex to the neck of the handle. But these, really, I've tried to bend them back to see if I can break one on any of these different blending brushes, and they're all strong enough that they'll hold up nicely over time. Now when you are inking with these, you can either hold by the handle and get a very light application because of the bend in the neck, or you can put your finger on the back of the head of the brush and that will allow you to apply a little more pressure. And of course, that applies to all these different blending brushes. Now, the Tailored Expression brushes, I will say, are super hard to get a hold of. They sell it very quickly, but you can always get on the pre-order list so that you can get them as soon as they have another shipment in. So in summary, the advantage of the Tailored Expression blending brushes is that they're high quality, color-coded, and have white bristles. Okay, our next option for blending brushes is from the Stamp Market. Now the Stamp Market has three sizes of blending brushes available, the three you see here. There's large, medium, and small, but that small isn't too small. It's actually a still a pretty versatile size. Now these have a white strong handle, and it says the Stamp Market on the handle, and the super soft brown bristles. And by the way, I should have said this at first, but all of these blending brushes I find give very similar performances and the bristles are very similar between them. So I think the performance of all of them is excellent. It's the other features that I think you need to consider when purchasing some. When using these, I did notice that the handle or the neck of the handle on the stamp market is a little bit stronger than the others, but upon testing all of my brushes by bending them to see if I could break them, they are all strong and should hold up for a long time with no problem. Okay, so the advantage of the stamp market blending brushes is that they're high quality, have the white handle available in three useful sizes, you can buy them individual too, and the price point is good if you buy them over on their website. Which, by the way, I do have a price comparison between the brushes. There's really not a huge difference. But I do have that price comparison on my blog, which is linked below in my description. Next up, we have the Honey Bee Stamps Blender Brushes. Now, these are high quality. They have black handles with the logo on the handle and white bristles. There are two packs available. On the left are the two larger brushes that are sold together and on the right are the three smaller brushes that are sold together. I like the five different size options that are available, and that's an advantage because you can just get these and have all of your needs covered. I do like the white bristles because I can easily tell what color ink that particular brush is used for. However, I will still color code the neck with a little piece of string or ribbon just to make sure everything is organized. Okay, the last type of blending brush I wanted to share with you today is from Trinity Stamps. And although these have similarities in performance to the other brushes, there are some very distinct differences. The first being is that these brushes come with a cap. 
so you can keep your brushes protected and keep from getting ink on a project when you don't want to, which I happen to do all the time because I have a messy desk when I craft, and the cap pops on and off easily. Another advantage of the Blending Buddy is that it has a flat bottom to the handle, so check this out. You can actually stand these brushes up. I, again, have a crafty mess when I create, and so I often lose my brushes under piles of stuff. So this way I can stand them up on my work surface so they're easy to grab. Now these are available in white bristle and brown bristle, and check out the tip of them. The tip of the brush is actually tapered which is unique from the other brushes too. So it's nice because you can get into tighter areas with the tip of the brush. But when blending, I find that I get the same kind of results as I do with the rounder tip brushes. So the tapered tip is helpful, but it doesn't hinder performance in any way. And by the way, you'll notice that many of my brushes are new in today's video. I have tested lots of them out, but I bought some newer ones to show in the video so you could see what they look like when you buy them. And I recently bought a bunch of these white blender buddies, so you'll be seeing me use them in future videos. I just find the tapered tip to be an advantage, and I like that it'll stand up with the cap. So I've shared many different brands of blending brushes and you really can't go wrong with any of them. Just consider the different advantages and what would matter most to you, but all will give great inking results. Okay, when using your blending brushes, I again recommend to start off the paper and work your way on using a light hand. Then you can build up color to make it as dark as you want. But these blending brushes are excellent for getting that soft glow of color that you might want on a background. If you want to start in the middle of the paper, again, tap off the excess ink on your work surface. And that will allow you to make sure you get a nice, smooth, even blend. You can always pick up that extra ink that you wipe off on your work surface and add it to the paper as you go. Now, if you have had trouble with other inking tools in the past, I do recommend the blending brushes. They're very forgiving. And I will do a video soon where I talk more about blending different colors together on a background. I just wanted to cover the basics of the tools here. But keep in mind when blending from one color to the next, the key is to overlap. Okay, so now it's on to storage. I just wanted to share a few different storage options for both of the types of inking tools. Let's first start with the Tim Holtz ink blending tool with the wood handle. Now you really only need one or two of these and you can switch out that foam applicator. But if you're one of those crazy crafters like me who has a lot of ink blending tools, there are a few storage options. Now my Distress Inks and Distress Oxide Inks are in Organize More containers and I have a little slot for my ink blending tool to fit. So I'll link to Organize More so you can see the different options that they have. This was a custom one they built for a pullout in my craft room. But you can always store the ink applicator right next to the ink. Now another storage option for your ink blending tools is to use an acrylic nail polish organizer. I have a couple of these in my IKEA drawers, and in these I keep my ink blending tools that I use for other dye inks. I just have one tool for a different color family, so that teal one there I would use with any kind of pool or teal or turquoise ink. Now these are not in rainbow order because I'm reorganizing, but that's something that Lila and I have planned to do soon. But these nail polish holders are very handy, and you can pick them up and take them to your desk, and I'll link to a few options below. Okay, now for some organization options for blending brushes. First, we have the blending brush caddy, which is a longer caddy that you can stand on your desk or on a shelf. It holds 10 brushes and you can see it works great with a variety of size brushes too. Now you can either have them face in this direction or turn around and face the other direction, whatever works best for you. I like that this is clear and can really fit nicely on the edge of a shelf. Another option is the round brush holder. This is also clear. It doesn't spin or have a handle, so this is something I think you'd want to set on your desk and leave there. It also holds 10 brushes and is inexpensive and does hold the different size brushes. There is also the Tailored Expressions Caddy that you can use with their brushes as you see here, or you can use other brushes in it. It holds 10 brushes, has a handle in the middle to pick it up easily, and you can also spin it. 
They also, by the way, sell a little tool that you can slip onto your fingers to help with brushing away color from your brushes as you're cleaning them with gentle soap and water. But honestly, I never clean my brushes. I just keep using them and I find the more ink on them, the better you blend. So these are several options for tabletop organization, but honestly, the way I like to store mine is hidden. So I have mine hanging inside of a cabinet door. So this is actually in my craft room inside of a cabinet door, and I have cable clips that I have stuck to the door, and it holds my brushes perfectly. So really easy to do, you just press the brush into the cable clip, it holds it, and when you're ready to take it out, you just pull it out. So you can see how easy this works. If you've got a door that you can store your brushes in, this is a great option. Now you don't need this many blending brushes. This is my job, so I use these a lot. So for me, it's handy to have lots of them on hand. So I have a few projects coming up using my blending brushes, and I have some organization to do. I'm actually going to wrap the string around the neck of all these blending brushes and glue it there so I can more easily see the different colors. I also am adding some of the other brushes into my collection here that I have hanging on the door, including more of those blender buddies. I really like hanging those on the door too because they have that flat bottom. So the hanging option is a good one. Okay, so there is a ton of information for you on tools for creating ink blended backgrounds. Now I do want to add a few things. First of all, I, I really tried to include all the information I could in this video. If I think of anything or have some frequently asked questions, I will add that to my comments below. I'll pin it to the top, so be sure to check there in case there's any more information I want to add. Also, I would recommend any of the products that I recommend today. These are all great companies, small businesses that will stand behind their products, and I trust what they have to offer. And last but not least, everybody's different. Everybody crafts different, everybody inks different. So what may work best for you may be different than what works best for another person. So just try out some of the options and then go with what is best for you. If you are interested in any of these products, I do have them listed in my YouTube description below. And there's much more information on my blog, which I'll link to here, including a little bit of a price comparison. If you're interested in learning more about cardstocks and uh, inks, I have two videos here in the middle. Thank you for watching today. I appreciate it, and I hope you have a great week.